hear what's happening here? What just happened? That music automatically ducked below my dialogue. So you can hear me talk a little bit better. And if I stop talking, the music's gonna come back up. And once I start talking again, it's gonna duck back down. Today, we're gonna look at the new ducking feature here in Resolve 19. Now, automatic ducking of your music is not a new thing. It's been in Resolve a long time, but now it is way easier for you and anybody else to use right here in the edit tab, which is pretty sweet. So I do wanna show you exactly how to use it and the pros to using it, as well as a few things that are kind of cons. I'm not gonna say bad, because it's just things you need to be aware of while you're working with the new tool here in Resolve 19. So let's just jump in Resolve and check this out. In DaVinci Resolve here, let's take a look at where we can find the new ducking tool. So it is a track level effect, so we need to apply it on an entire track, and you're gonna to wanna to apply it onto your music track. So in my timeline here, I've got my talking head that you just saw. I've got a music track below that. And in order to turn on this effect, I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and open up my inspector at the top right. And we can make our inspector a little bigger by clicking this little icon. The next thing you need to do is actually select your music track. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm just gonna click on my music track. And now we see my track level effects come up right here. Voice isolation, dialogue leveler, dialogue separator, music remixer, and right here we have the ducker. So if I were to just play this through before turning on the ducker, you're gonna see our levels for our music are quite loud. And when I start talking, it's gonna to be too loud and overpower my voice. This is what it sounds like. Hear what's happening here? What just happened? That okay, too loud. So all we have to do is make sure our track's selected, turn on our ducker right here. And once our ducker is turned on, what we need to do is select a source. So what channel is the ducker gonna be listening to so we can duck our music below another track? So in my case, I only have two tracks here. So I've got my music and my MKE 600, which is my microphone. So I wanna pick the track that has my dialogue in it or my speaking in it, because that's what I want the ducker to respond to. So I'm gonna go ahead and select MKE 600. Now below that we have duck level. So that says how much am I gonna lower the volume once I detect that there's dialogue and we should lower the music. By default, it's at 2.7, which isn't gonna make much of a difference. So in order to hear the difference, I'm just gonna crank this all the way up. And this is gonna be 18 dB of reduction. So let's just play through this real quick and you can watch our meters here and listen to how it sounds with the rest of our settings as default settings, but our duck level cranked all the way up to minus 18. Hear what's happening here? What just happened? That music automatically ducked below. All right, so that works pretty good, but a couple things, what did we notice? Well, one, it lowered the music. That's not bad, that's what we wanted to do, but it was a very sharp cutoff, right? So the default settings are gonna make that music cut off real fast like that. And we don't necessarily want that. We want to ease down and ease back up when we're done talking. So that's the first thing we wanna take care of. And in order to correct that, we wanna come back into our mixer and we have our advanced settings right here. So you can use the tools right here if you want, or you can use this to pop out the little menu here with essentially the exact same things. Instead of sliders, you've got dials. So looking at our effect window here, let's talk about the different options of things that we can change here. So our duck level is just that. How many dB are we gonna reduce the music once the signal from our dialogue track is detected. The look ahead says, how far ahead in the timeline should I look while I'm playing the video in order to prepare and get ready to drop down or duck the music once I hear that dialogue? So by default, it's 15 milliseconds. I find I like to crank that up just a little bit so it looks ahead a little bit farther. I'll just set it around 100. The rise time is a little confusing. It's actually how long does it take for that volume of the music to go from full volume down to your specified reduction level. So in this case, minus 18 dB for us. So it should be like the fall time, not the rise time, because you're actually dropping down the volume. So how quickly do you want that to happen? By default, it's 10 milliseconds. And I think that's a little quick. I wanted to kind of ease in a little bit more. So check this out. Here's what the 10 milliseconds sounds like. You hear what's happening here? It's just an abrupt drop, right? So I'm going to crank that up. I'm gonna go to maybe, let's try, you could do a quarter of a second, which is around 250. Let's see how that sounds. You hear what's happening? Oh, back up a little bit more here. You hear what's happening here? What just happened? So I think that's a little bit better. It kind of eases into it a little bit more. And it's up to you on how quickly you want it to come down. You could crank that up and it's gonna take longer time to drop down the music volume. That's up to you. But I think around 250 is pretty good. 
The hold says, okay, once I don't have any more signal coming from your dialogue track, for example, in my timeline, you know, this section right here, once that dialogue audio stops, should I continue to hold the effect before it starts to bring it back up to its normal volume? Should I hold the music at that lower volume until I bring it back up to the volume that it is normally at? So in this case, the default is 150 milliseconds. Let's just go ahead and see how that sounds. And if I stop talking. The okay, so that's not too bad. I think that works okay. Now, what plays in combination with the hold is the recovery. So the recovery is, okay, once I start to go from the lowered volume back to my normal volume, how long does it take to get from here up to here, right? How long is the duration that it takes to go back to its full volume? So in this case, it's 750 milliseconds, which is like three quarters of a second. So if I were, for example, turn this off, right? And it just goes right back right away. Now you'll be able to hear what the hold is doing. So let's just listen to that real quick. And if I stop talking, okay, so the hold doesn't seem like it's doing much, much versus if I crank the hold up, here's what it sounds like now. And if I stop talking, so you can see it was like three quarters of a second that it held that volume a little lower. And even if I do a full second here, here's what that sounds like better. And if I stop talking, okay, not too bad, right? So the hold and recovery, they work hand in hand. They, they go together. So I'm going to just reset the hold to its default settings. And the recovery is how long does it take for it to ramp back up to its original volume? So if I just double click that 750, these settings seem pretty good. Sometimes you might want to make it a little bit longer, or you might want the hold to be a little bit longer if you have uh, breaks between when you're talking, right? And the breaks aren't that long but they're more than, you know, 150 milliseconds, which is like, you know, fairly quick. You may want to increase the hold time there just so that effect doesn't start to bump back up and then you start talking again and then it drops back down. It's just going to help create a smoother use of the effect there for you to keep that music volume at a lower level. So that's why I like to boost the hold up a little bit because if I were to, let's say, for example, make this gap here just a little bit longer, if I make a cut and just drag it over a little bit bigger here and I have the hold at zero, Let's see how quickly that music tries to go back up. Automatically ducked below my dialogue. So did you hear how it jumped back up? But if I increase the hold time, right, to say maybe half a second, it's not going to jump back up because that's less than a half a second gap. Here's what that sounds like. Automatically ducked below my dialogue. So you can hear me talk a little bit. Okay, so you can see how the hold will kind of make up for the extra space you might have between your words so that that music is not trying to bump back up in volume really quickly. So those are your basic tools that you're going to want to take a look at. It's really pretty easy. You can essentially just kind of move these dials around a little bit and see what works best for your clips. It's really not hard. You don't have to know a whole lot about what's going on here, and you're going to be able to get some good ducking below your dialogue tracks. So overall, the ducking feature here in the inspector works really well, especially if you have one dialogue track, you've got your music, and you can just make a few simple adjustments like we talked about. Works really well. But there are a few situations that I found that it doesn't work as good as I'd like it to. Or just things to know about. I wouldn't say they're bad. It's just things to be aware of when you're trying to use this particular tool. So check this out. So sometimes when we bring music into our videos, that volume on the music is really loud. For example, if we take a look at this track right here, my music track number two, take a look at where our levels are falling. <laughs> Okay, you can see we're almost peaking out there, and a lot of times music is mastered really loud, right? They want to get the most out of it that they can. So when I turn on the ducker in this situation, I'm going to select my track here, my music to track. I'm going to come over to my ducker. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to crank it all the way up here to minus 18 dB, where it's making 18 dB of reduction. And I'm going to make sure my MKE 600 track is selected, which it is. And now listen to the music when I play back through my clip. Now, keep in mind, my dialogue is kind of where I want it to be, around that minus 10 dB, right? But listen how loud the music still is, even with that 18 dB of ducking turned on. Ducking of your music is not a new thing. It's been in Resolve a long time, but now it is way easier for you and anybody else. So in that case, you notice, okay, the music is still too loud, but I've got the ducking cranked all the way up, and it's just not making the music quiet enough. So what do I do? So in this case, what I would recommend that you do is actually come to your music track and on the clip itself using either, well, either the clip itself or the fader, you want to lower the volume of the music itself, right? So I like to do it on the clip. I'm going to find that gain line and then just drag it down maybe 5 dB or so. 
And then I'm gonna try it again and see how it works. So the ducker's still turned on, it's still dropping at 8 dB, but our starting point for the music isn't quite as loud as the original there. So here's what that sounds like. The now automatic ducking of your music is not a new thing. It's been in Resolve a long time, but now it is. So we can see it's a little bit better. It's maybe around minus 25 dB there or so. And let's say if I just uh, move over this part, let's extend out our music track so we can, oh, so we can hear how loud it gets once I stop talking. else to use right here in the edit tab, which is pretty sweet. So even still, it's getting up to, you know, almost minus five dB, which in general, I think that's a little bit loud, at least for my kinds of videos and stuff. So I'm gonna lower that back a little bit more. If you hold your shift key, you can be a little more precise there as you lower the volume. So let's say minus eight dB. And again, on my track, if I click on my track level, the ducking is still at minus 18. And let's see how that sounds. And anybody else to use right here in the edit tab, which is pretty sweet. So I think that's sounding pretty better. Now it does come up a little quick, so I might wanna make my recovery a little bit longer there. Now let's say, for example, I lowered it quite a bit. Let's say it's minus 15 dB. If I select my track again, looking at my ducker here, maybe now minus 18 is too much to drop it down by. Let's listen and watch our levels over here. Easier for you and anybody else to use right here in the edit tab, which is... So those are a little quiet, say, maybe I wanna boost it back up. I can just change my duck level right here. Let's bring it up to say minus 12. For you and anybody else to use right here in the edit tab, which is pretty sweet. Okay, so I think that works better. So keep in mind that if the music is too loud and the ducking doesn't seem like it's doing enough, just go ahead and lower either your track fader or the volume on your music clip itself. So that's the first thing I think is important to know is that if it's just not working out right, doesn't sound like it's doing what you want it to do, drop the volume back on that clip a little bit. You can make some adjustments to your duck level there and uh, then you should be good to go as far as the ducking is concerned. Now, the other thing that I think is really important that you guys know about is that the auto ducking feature can only respond to one dialogue track. Now, I think this is kind of a big deal only because a lot of times when we're working in videos, unless it's just one person in the video, we've got multiple tracks of dialogue. So the ducker will only respond to one dialogue track. Let me show you what I mean. In my timeline here, I just put the audio in two different tracks here. Now, if I were to use my music here that, that we were just looking at, I'm going to select my music track. I've got the ducker turned on. Now, when it comes to source, I can only select one source. And as you notice, I think this is a beta thing that the track names don't update like perfectly sometimes. So I think that's just a beta thing. And if I restart resolve, it'll all come up just fine. But you can only select one source. So, I can only pick one, and if I only have one source selected, here's what it sounds like. It's gonna to respond to track one here, but not to track two. So listen what happens. Ducking feature here in Resolve 19. Now, automatic ducking of your music is not a new thing. It's been in Resolve a long time, but now it is way easier. So you can see it's only responding to the one track. So I think that's a little tricky uh, because I'm not gonna have my music in multiple tracks where I can use the track level effect on you know multiple tracks. That doesn't make sense. But there's a lot of times that I've got dialogue in multiple tracks. And if I want that music to respond to the dialogue, this isn't going to do that for me. You'd have to go and do it the old school way, I'm going to call it, where you jump into Fairlight, you use the dynamics panel, and then we can have the automatic ducking applied and respond to any a number of dialogue tracks or any other track that we want. And you can have as many of them as you want as well. Uh, that the music will respond to. Whereas the ducker here in the inspector, you can only have it respond to one track. So that's just something to be aware of. It's not a deal breaker or anything. I think it's just something that you need to know and understand, especially if you have multiple people, multiple tracks, and you want that music to respond to uh, multiple tracks, the ducker in the inspector here is not gonna do that for you. So that is the new ducker here in DaVinci Resolve 19, guys. It's a great tool, makes it really quick and easy, especially if you just got that one dialogue track that you wanna have your music respond to. Works out perfect, but do keep in mind that if you've got multiple dialogue tracks, you're gonna have to do it the old school way, I'm gonna say, and uh, jump in and use the dynamics panel send out your dialogue channels and then have those music channels listen and it's still going to do the automatic ducking same thing that it's doing here it just takes a little bit more work and you got to understand what's going on a little bit more but in general the auto ducking here in davinci resolve 19 beta going to do a great job for you 
Really cool. I use it often. I've been using it a bunch already, especially when I just have one dialogue track. It's awesome. Black Magic, we love you guys. You guys keep making awesome stuff. And it was great to see you guys at NAB. That was a fun, uh, fun trip to get to hang with you and uh, all your great people there at Black Magic, as well as Casey, Alex, and some of the other crew out there. So with that said, guys, I'm done. I'm out of here. Going to go edit some videos, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video with some more new DaVinci Resolve 19 beta stuff. All right. Oh, by the way, if you want to level up your audio, check out my course, Audio Essentials for Video Editors in DaVinci Resolve. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.